So he was able to somehow mix the psychological sense of the word with the five senses, sight, sound, hearing, taste, and touch. And this comes together because when he was 18 years old, he had an amazing, crazy professor back in Barcelona that he was saying that Miro had to be able to experience touch and read poetry and listening to music all together to somehow develop these senses that later on were extremely meaningful throughout his career. Why? Because that really triggered the perception of reality. I think that when we talk about Miro, it's quite remarkable to say that one day one journalist said, but Miro, what is your art all about? And he said, well, my art is about the idea of having a poem put into music by a painter. And um, what I watched that these students, I mean, that uh, seven grade students, 13 years old, 12, 13 years old, yeah, and they were very active working on this picture. They, they were very inspired and going in this and having ideas and, yeah, we can uh, take this instrument and make, make this sound. It was very nice to, to watch. No. No, no, they, they don't play instruments. I don't know if, if some maybe play something, but in this class, they use the off instruments and drums and percussion instruments, boom records and, and these things. Um, so it's really, um, I think uh, for most of them, they have a little bit experience of doing something like this in school. 
yeah, they, they don't seem to be absolutely beginners because it works very well. It's a very nice class, really. I, I never seen a seventh grade class um, like this. Um, they're doing everything. They are very inspired and doing really everything. Ich finde an Miros Bildern die Vielzahl ihrer interpretatorischen Umsetzungsmöglichkeiten spannend. Und so habe ich mich in meinen drei Stücken Blue, La Danseuse und Circus auch für verschiedene musikalische Möglichkeiten entschieden. Im Stück Blue habe ich die Struktur des Bildes in eine rhythmische Struktur übertragen, die sich als Oszinato durch das komplette Stück zieht während ich im zweiten Stück, La Danseuse, die Stimmungen der einzelnen Bildelemente in musikalische Parameter übertragen habe und so eine Art Psychogramm zeichnen wollte.
I was 10. My grandpa was at home with 10 copper plates on the ground, ready to be work because he was painting it with a mix of dust of iron and sugar that was able to make this very a strong texture before making a print. What happened? Miro's dogs began to lick with their tongue that big powder of iron dust and sugar because it was sweet. And with the paws, they were stepping on the 10 copper plates. And Miro's assistant said, Miro, my God, what a disaster. All your series has been ruined by your dogs. Look at this. It's plenty of dogs, prints all over your work. And my grandfather said, fantastic. This is beautiful. What a matter of chance. What a great accident. Now we will call this series Dogs Series. <laughs>
was a very, very, very special way to somehow get into my grandfather's spirit and my grandfather's psyche. I really like it. Congratulations. I would like to come back to the Stockhausen topic because, um, how to start? Uh, as you know, I personally am a person who is reading and who is writing. And in the recent times I read two books which inspired me a lot. And this is on one hand Miro and Music very well, yes, but also this um, book from Simon Wade and Heather Dundas about Foucault in California. And uh, what um, hits me very much is um, that Foucault book is about an LSD experience and you were um, talking about mescaline and these uh, psychedelic drugs as well. And um, Foucault had this experience in Death Valley, in Death Valley where he took an LSD trip but as well listened to music. And what uh, makes me very um, aware is that he was listening um, to Gesang der Jünglinge, Sound of the Youth uh, from Stockhausen. And uh, when I read your book about Miro and music, I found, th found that this piece of music is uh, in was in your grandfather's library or record library as well. He had this this um, LP, this ven venial um, about 
uh, Gesang der Jünglinge, Song of the Youth. And I was very um, fond of the, the point that Stockhausen himself told how to listen to it. He, there is a uh, Stockhausen quote where he says, you have to uh, build up uh, five groups of loudspeakers around the listeners in the room and it has to be on every side and in the best case uh, one loudspeaker from above and there you are in a cathedral of sounds and that is how to listen to it. This is what Stockhausen said about it. And um, now I found out Foucault listened to this piece of music with a um, tape recorder in Death Valley with uh, mountains around him and I think echoes and a lot of it, but not really about five loudspeakers in a several uh, grouping around him, but very, in a very different way. And it influenced um, his writing afterwards. Foucault says this LSD and this listening influenced him very much. And I'm now interested in how did Miro listen to music? I read something in your book about um, rooms which were very clean and very uh, like a cathedral inside and not much in it, but other rooms were full of the, the brushes and the canvas and all of this. but also going into experimentation in art in the 20th century and music in the 20th century. My grandpa was very much into Messiaen. Messiaen was a French composer that was also an ornithologist. And he loved to go into the nature, into the countryside with a recorder and record bird songs and also make transcription of bird songs and insects. He was also recording insects. That was crazy at that time. Hi, uh, my name is Tim Haas. Ich bin im siebten Semester des Bachelor of Arts Studiums jetzt an der Musikhochschule in Lübeck und ich habe ebenfalls eine Komposition für das Miro Projekt geschrieben. Um, und zwar habe ich ein Stück geschrieben zu dem Werk mit dem Titel Le Chant du Rosignol à minuit et la pluie matinale, was ungefähr so viel bedeutet wie der Gesang der Nachtigall zur Mitternacht und ähm, der morgendliche Regen. Ähm, dieses Stück hat Miro 1940 ungefähr geschrieben und ähm, er befand sich dann in einer Zeit, in der er ungefähr um 1939 aus Paris geflohen ist mit seiner Familie ähm, gegen Nordwesten ans Meer und da eine ganze Zeit lang gelebt hat in einem kleinen Ort. Und er hat selber später gesagt, dass er sich zu dieser Zeit in einer besonderen Phase des Schaffens befand, weil er viel Zeit alleine verbracht hat und sehr so auf sich selbst bezogen war, auch sehr irgendwie verschlossen war 
und vor allem so Dinge wie Musik und Natur auf einmal im Mittelpunkt standen ähm, und auch vor allem Dinge wie Nacht und Sterne eine große Rolle für ihn spielten. Und da hat dieses Bild eigentlich so ein bisschen perfekt reingepasst, deswegen habe ich dazu geschrieben, weil ich mir ganz gut vorstellen konnte, wie er, weil ich habe mir so ein Bild vorgestellt, wie er da saß und dann halt darüber nachgedacht hat, wie er das malen könnte. Ähm, und ich habe dann versucht, in meiner Komposition nicht nur dieses Bild eigentlich irgendwie darzustellen musikalisch, sondern gleichzeitig auch noch die Situation, in der er sich befand, in der, wie er sich vielleicht gefühlt hat oder vielleicht auch so ein bisschen den, die Umgebung darzustellen, die er wahrgenommen hat, während er darüber nachgedacht hat. Was ich sehr faszinierend finde beim Malen, nämlich die Tatsache, dass ja, wenn man, wenn man einmal, ein, einmal gemalt hat, dann ist das auf dem Stück Papier 
Ähm, und dann bleibt es auch so. Ich glaube zumindest, so viel kann man da nicht verändern, da bin ich kein Experte. Aber deswegen habe ich versucht, das in der Musik auch so ein bisschen festzuhalten, indem ich in erster Linie mich selber beim Improvisieren aufgenommen habe und große Teile der Komposition, die Sie hören werden, eigentlich äh, improvisierte Momente von mir sind. Und diese Momente habe ich dann quasi festgehalten und versucht so zusammenzufassen, so dass das Ganze auch irgendwie diese Art endgültigen Charakter bekommen hat. And when we carry on through the analogy between uh, music and poetry in my grandfather's work, we have to go into a great friendship that he developed with one American um, composer called John Cage. Because in 1952, John Cage himself was extremely influenced by Japanese philosophy, haiku. Haiku, as you know, was an amazing way to have these brief movements and structures, sounds around the haiku form. And I think that seeing how Japanese, American uh, music and Miro's poetical paintings as well, open up a new window into uh, Buddhism and Japanese philosophy. Because my grandpa traveled twice to Japan in 1966 and in 1970, and he was extremely influenced by these lords of the spirit, like my grandpa used to call them. Mein Name ist Leon Wolf. Ich studiere Musikvermittlung an der Musikhochschule Lübeck im zweiten Semester mit Hauptfach Geige und habe das Stück Tänzerin 2 komponiert. Für dieses Stück hat mich das Bild Tänzerin 2 von Miro inspiriert und auch sein Leben zu dieser Zeit, als er das Bild gemalt hat, unter anderem seine Begeisterung für Flamenco, so dass ich mir vor dem Schreiben der Komposition einige Flamenco-Tänze angeschaut und angehört habe und auch daher die Idee stammt, Percussion in den klavier streicher einzubringen. Es gibt in dem Stück verschiedene Passagen und auch Instrumente, die bestimmte Teile des Bildes widerspiegeln. Zum Beispiel, dass die Bratsche mehrheitlich das Herz symbolisiert 
und die Geige eher den blauen Hintergrund und feine Linien. Oder das Cello vor allen Dingen die Beine und die tanzende Energie der Tänzerin. In meiner Komposition gibt es eine Stelle, an der das Hören oder die Musik wieder in den Hintergrund tritt und quasi wieder von vorne anfängt. Und ich habe dort versucht, das zu komponieren, was Miro mit seiner Kunst letzten Endes gemacht hat, nämlich die Tänzerin wahrzunehmen und irgendwie durch seine Kunst nicht darzustellen, sondern auch zu kommentieren und mit einer Bedeutung für sich zu versehen. Und diesen Vorgang wollte ich in der Musik darstellen, indem ich eine Art Kommentarfunktion eingefügt habe, am Ende nochmal den gesamten Aufbau neu entstehen zu lassen und vollends ausklingen zu lassen, als Kommentar auf das, was schon erklungen ist. Und ich hoffe, dass bei euch allen, die ihr die Konversation hört, auch eine Kommentarfunktion anspringt und bei euch auch etwas berührt.
Oh my God, that was fantastic. I really enjoyed that piece. It's full of love, full of joy, full of hope, full of love, and a great melody that makes me, you know, elevate my spirit. That was beautiful. I would like to mention, uh, for me, it's like a circle. I heard the piece uh, from Leon yesterday, uh, looking at the picture, and now it was my inspiration by the music to see the picture in another way, yeah? And it matches and uh, it changes. Uh, and then, uh, you took this elements, a, a little bit, the flamenco, no? Uh, you took yes. a, little, a little bit and uh, the picture changes for me. Uh, it, uh, it's like um, my idea, what came in my mind was uh, when I saw, uh, the Miro Museum in, in Palma, then you see it was created for the work of your grandfather and it, it, it is so perfect. To the, and now the music is written to the picture and it matches and it changes. It, it changes the way uh, you get into the picture sometimes, so. Absolutely. Uh, I read in the book that uh, this painting shows a nightclub dancer. So I took myself a bit into these golden twenties, smoky jazz clubs, and I, I and I I did a little jazzy piece on it. And I wanted also to musically show this twist of the dancer because I perceived this spiral as a twist of the dancer's leg. So I, I showed this musically with the sound of a flexatone. Flexatone is a little percussion instrument which makes a funny sound like a jump in the air. And I hope that this code could also be audible in the composition. Thank 
Very nice. I like because brings you back to midnight in a jazz club in Paris, all the ambience at night with these velvet seats, this very dark room, this very spiritual music, and the dancer have naked on the stage. Wow, it brings me to these spaces of great, great moments in Paris, crazy years in the 20s, you know, about Bohème and about swing and about jazz, experimentational, with a great communion with the audience at night, of course, smoking and drinking a lot, and having this kind of great, great, let's say, spiritual experience. I like it very much. Thank so, you. Uh, especially this, this sensuality that you just mentioned, uh, it was really strong, I think, in the painting because the body of the dancer is a heart and then there is also the, the genitals of the dancer underneath. So it, it, I wanted to show this kind of sensuality uh, in the dance and in the, in the character of the music in a, in a way. You have lovely, great, powerful geniuses that can really make great composition. You have to be very, very proud of them. Congratulations.
Thank you. Just keep in touch. Bye bye. 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 Bye everybody. You push my body out. I have to move. Had a beautiful swing to move with a melody. It was beautiful. Thank uh you. -huh.